How's it going guys and welcome to week one Wednesday or as we like to call it Wow, so solemn this time Very <laughs> very solemn We are really excited to be here live with you guys. We are gonna be talking about my Carta knives I'm pretty stoked. Are you pretty stoked? Uh my carta because yeah. I think it's probably our favorite handle material and we were like hey Let's do my carta. You guys know how sometimes we have wows where it's like we're super busy and then like we don't have a lot of time to get ready for the live show here we are <laughs> <laughs> But we're gonna do it and it's gonna be awesome and we are here because of we Civivi knives uh, We're very grateful for them sponsoring the show. They don't tell us what to do They don't tell us what to put on the show but I promise if you hold on to the end, you'll find out why it's awesome that they are a great community member supporting the show. Um, as always, with Week One Wednesday, we are gonna kick it off with a few new arrivals and then we're jumping into the Micarta knives. And uh, I've got the first new arrival. It's case knife. So it's a, it's a cute little pink case knife. That is pretty cute. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, real with you guys. We have more than just the cute little pink one. We have a bunch of new case knives, but I picked this one because it was pink, so why not? <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is the Pocket Hunter. Not not much of a hunter with that <laughs> that pink look to it, but obviously it's a it's a pattern, right? It's a traditional pattern. So this is the Pocket Hunter. Uh, if I can get my finger there in there to open the second blade. Oop. Am I gonna cut myself right at the beginning of WoW? Please. Can't Say get, no. I can't. Nope. I'm gonna cut myself. I'm not gonna do it, guys. You guys know how it works. Um, anyways, $59.99 on the website, made in the USA. Great little knife from Case Knife. Um, obviously, I picked it just a little bit silly, but we do have some really neat new trapper patterns, uh, peanut patterns, all sorts of really neat patterns from Case in stock right now. Uh, this has got the. Uh, this is a pink Kieranite. Pretty sure Kieranite. Yes, pink Kieranite, and yeah, great little knife from Case. That's awesome. On new on the website, brand brand, brand new. I think it came in today. Well, I have the next one. Ooh, what do you got? I have a ZT. Now Ooh, this thing that's is factory a special. factory special series zero five six two blue gray with blue carbon fiber. I don't know if Jamie can get the blue carbon fiber on there. I sure hope so. He's giving me a thumbs up. He really isn't. But <laughs> two, oh, two thumbs down. Two thumbs down. <laughs> anyway, guys, this is a sweet knife. It's new. Uh, CPM 20 CV steel. Uh, we're coming in right around five and a half ounces. You got the uh, titanium frame lock, the flipper, and it's pretty sweet. I like how you gave the weight on a ZT knife. I really want my ZT knife to be lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> But one thing I will say about that, we only have like 40 of them because they are a factory They are a factory special knife. So right. if you want one, now is the time because I think we've already moved like 10 or 12 and they've only been in stock for like a few hours. So those are like hot, brand new, new. Oh snap. Yeah, so if you want one. $280 on. on the website and you can have Blue Carbon Fiber ZT. At only 5.6 ounces. At only five and a half <laughs> ounces, mind you. All right, so the next new one we have, if you guys pay attention to the YouTube channel, you've already seen these today, is the Boker Cottage Craft Kitchen Knives. And I think I actually, I think this eight inch chef knife is one that we used in the shoot possibly. Anyways, uh, this is a um, C75 carbon steel blade with a plum wood handle, completely handmade in Solingen, Germany. We are really, really excited about these knives. When we went to Solingen a year ago and did the shop tour with Boker, they were telling us about this project and we were like, hey, can we just like get those at Blade HQ and maybe just at Blade HQ only? And they're like, sure, let's do it. So uh, it's a very traditionally built um, kitchen knife. We've got the eight inch chef knife and uh, the other knife that I'm not gonna say, I always say it wrong, Santo Santoku? San Santoku. Santoku, maybe? Mm, I always say it wrong. Uh, it's, it's called a Hammond. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's called a Hammond. Anyways, um, so we have these, uh, these two here, and then there's also a smaller chef's knife and a paring knife. Um, the really cool thing about these guys, handmade in Solingen, Germany, um, the plum wood is hydrophobic. It's very comfortable in hand. It doesn't absorb water stains, stuff like that. The C75 steel, it is a, a carbon steel. So it actually will form a nice patina on it that will protect the steel over time. So they, they'll age really nicely. Um, built after the same way that a lot of knives are built in the cottages there in Germany and had been for literally centuries. And you can pick these up at Blade HQ. Like the, I think the most expensive one's like 70 bucks. 
Like those are so cool. Really affordable. Guys, we've been talking about kitchen knives, you know, here and there, we've got a kitchen knife knife banner coming up. And I will say that these are really, really awesome knives. Very impressive. And not just because I'm friends with Boker, not because they're just at Blade HQ. There are a lot of great kitchen knives out there, but for the price and what you're getting with that Cottage Craft series, it really is pretty stellar. So anyways, if you're looking for a kitchen knife, Cottage Craft. I feel like you buy that knife for the story and the mm -hmm. background, you yeah. know, you buy it for the cottage craft. And then the, the great part about it is, and then it actually works as a real knife. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just like, oh, it's got a cool story. I'll like hang it up on the wall. It's like, it's got right. a cool story and I'm going to use it every day to cook. I mean, I don't cook every day, but the days I do cook. I cook Taco <laughs> Bell pretty good. There you go, right? <laughs> All right. I got the next one. Guys, this is the craziest custom that you'll ever see. This is a Marfion Custom now. It's got an LMAX blade, right? LMAX, yeah. LMAX steel. And it is called the Tactical Beard Comb. <laughs> it's a comb <laughs> made out of LMAX. <laughs> Tony, I love it. I love it, man. <laughs> this thing's so cool. Guys, LMAX comb, let's see, 3.7, 3.07 ounces. <laughs> It's really important to me that my tactical comb doesn't weigh my pants down too much. So <laughs> thank you for that important piece of information. See, <laughs> Zach's not really into the, like the beard oils and combs, no, but no, no, no. you know what? If if this nest is scraggly, mm. I'm gonna comb through it. There you go. There you and go. I'm gonna start a GoFundMe, <laughs> <laughs> so I can re so we can all purchase this for my beard at $380. Yeah, it's definitely a couple of dollars, but it is actually LMAX, which I oh, think is incredible. It's LMAX yeah, and I, it is- I love it. It's all the same quality. It. <laughs> it's epic. It really is cool. It's fun to see a company like Microtech just having some fun. Oh, heck yeah. I mean? like it's, it's, I, I love it. All right, cool. Um, well, if you're just joining us, thank you for joining in. Um, we are gonna be talking micarta knives today. We have a ton of knives, almost 30 knives on the table. There's a lot of micarta. There was a lot of stuff we wanted to talk about, and we wanted to mix in stuff that we don't, you guys don't see often. So there's some stuff that's going to be familiar, of course, um, but we did try to mix in stuff that some stuff that has never even been seen on camera at Blade HQ. So we're hoping that you guys enjoy it, um, and I think we're just going to kick it off. Yeah. You want me to go first? You? Yeah, I'll go first. Yeah, you want me? I'll go first. I'll go first. Oh, you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay, Kurt's going to go first. <laughs> All right, guys. First off on micarta banter is, or I guess my car, wow, my bad. Battle Horse Knives, this is the Highlander. There can be only one. There can only be one Highlander. I love it. This thing is really cool, guys. It's 01 steel, but man, that is a thick boy going to work. I'm telling you right now, this is a very big, hefty fixed blade. I like how rounded the handles are. Oh man, I'm telling you right now, it's so smooth. The yeah. handle's so smooth. And uh, it's just, mm. just, one, that, just one of those. Does that say enough? Just, <laughs> mm. no guys, this is a really cool knife. I love these bigger fixed blades that Battle Horse Knives makes. They also always come with a quality leather sheath, which smells so good. And let's see, let's talk some specs. It's a ten, five and a half inch blade. 10 inches overall, <clears throat> excuse me. And let's see, made in the USA, Owen Steel, 220 bucks. And you could have this knife with this leather sheath and the amazing micarta. This is actually really good quality micarta. Some micarta is like, okay. And then yeah. there's some that they kind of polish. They make it really smooth, but this is just raw micarta, but the handle's so smooth. Yeah, so not not so all smooth. micarta is created equally. Right. And there is actually, in the knife world, there is a like a brand that is called micarta. So the same way that you might tell somebody like, oh, hand me a Kleenex. Well, Kleenex is a brand, and what they're handing you is just a tissue, right? Um, so what you're seeing on the table, some of this is proper micarta, and some of this is just kind of the layman, like we'll say, oh, it's got micarta, right? Because right. It's, it's that that type of material, right? Like a canvas micarta. Right. Um, so next up, we have a knife from Liang Ma. Liang Ma makes some stellar knives. Um, this is the Warrior II V2. It's a full titanium construction, uh, frame block knife, stainless steel insert, nice pocket clip. It's got this really cool blade shape. It's not, 
I mean, maybe it's just barely a tanto because this technically these these two grinds do kind of meet at a point. So maybe uh, we could call it a tanto blade. Um, the steel on this thing is M390, and then of course that nice micarta inlay. Now you were mentioning that that feels more like a cloth micarta, right? right? This is a little bit more of a polished micarta. Okay. It doesn't feel like a wood. Sometimes they'll polish the micarta so much that you're like, oh, is that like a yeah? It's like super a wood? smooth. Super smooth. It still has a little bit of texture to it, which is nice because especially when you pair that against the titanium, it actually yeah. feels really neat. Um, anyways, really neat knife from Leong Ma. This is the Warrior 2 V2, and it goes for 445 on the website. So definitely a little bit of a spendy knife. Definitely a little bit of a spendy knife. The action on this thing is so good. I was gonna like, say, right before we started, you were like, man, yeah. This thing is smooth. It's so, so smooth. Leong Ma makes just great knives. He actually makes some pretty cool knives with micarta. We have another one of his on the table at some point. Maybe Kurt has it. But anyways, um, really neat knife from Leong Ma. Overall length on this thing too is 8.5 inches. So it's a nice mid to almost large sized folder. I really like the blade on that. Yeah. That's cool. I have a Kaiser Clutch. Now I've never held the Kaiser Clutch. And the micarta on it is very interesting. I don't know how close we can get, or if I can like block out some shot, I don't know. But it's it has a very deep milling be in between each of these lines. So really, it's like, like listen to this. It's really grooved and it really adds a lot of purchase to the hand. It's a cool knife. Honestly, I don't think I've ever seen my carta milled in this way to add so much texture, but it it honestly, for how grooved it is, it's still pleasant, pleasantly yeah. happy. It's not rough. Hand. We saw this knife at SHOT Show 2020, so the last SHOT Show in January, and I really like that knife. Everything from like that interesting blade shape with kind of that, that it's a it's a thin blade, but has that big belly on it, yeah. all the way to the way they did the micarta. Like you said, it's just, it's really interesting way to do micarta. Right. It's a S35VN steel. You got your micarta, your titanium. It's a frame lock, milled pocket clip for 165 bucks. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I've, this is different than most of what you'll see with micarta. And for an inlay, especially an inlay in like a titanium knife, I actually, I really like it. That's why I made it on the table is, I saw we had those and I was like, oh, I'm putting that up on the table because right. it caught my eye at SHOT Show and I still like it, I mean, however many months later, right? 10 months later. Yeah, Kaiser Clutch. Coming in clutch. Clutch <laughs> clutch moment. My, my kid at home is probably laughing at me. For saying I, clutch moment? I said clutch moment like a month ago. Yeah. I don't, he, he was, I don't know, maybe a lacrosse, maybe he's playing video and maybe right. he was walking the dog and I was like, dude, that's clutch. And he's like, oh, clutch, dad. <laughs> and I was like, whatever, a little you punk. Just tell him, be like, dude, it's it's a it's a knife name. I'm like, go do the dishes. Go do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've kicked it off with a handful of a little more expensive knives. So we do have some more budget uh, micarta knives on the table. And this is something that's been really cool to see is micarta in knives that are in the sub $100 range, right? Oh, and yeah. so this one here, this is the QSP Penguin. This thing goes for $29. I love that knife. It's a great knife. It's a really great knife. And I know a lot of you guys were requesting this on Instagram, on um, YouTube communities, and so we made sure that we had it on the table. This has got a D2 blade, right? Nice micarta. It's got that kind of Warncliffe sheep's foot style. Um, nice deep carry pocket clip recessed, or not recessed, but you can access the screws through the top of the pocket clip, which I think is really neat, through these two holes right there. And, uh, you know, just a little liner lock, but for 30 bucks to get a D2 blade and an actual good feeling micarta handle. Well, and it's not just, like the D2, it has a thick stock all the way in the back, an amazing grind. Yeah. That thing is, I'm telling you, when I first pulled those out and I was doing photos of them, mm -hmm. man, I was, I was stoked. I was like, dang, 30 bucks? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. QSP is doing a killer job with uh, with micarta, materials, and then pricing. Just crazy. So that's the QSP Penguin. And uh, like I said, 30 bucks on the website. You know what I forgot to mention? What? We have a new guy in the live stream right now. So we got a new guy working at Blade HQ. His name is Graham. He's in the live comments right now. Give Graham a shout out. Ask him questions. If you have questions, he'll send them my way. I'm watching here on our little 
inner office, department, whatever, Slack thing. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions on what's on the table or general questions, uh, send them over to Graham. Say hi to Graham. Welcome to the Blade HQ community. This is like his, not even his, I don't think his full second week yet. Right. So yeah, he's brand, brand new. He's awesome. Hopefully he doesn't break it. Oh, he's doing good. <laughs> he's doing great. All right, what's your next knife? I have also a D2 blade micarta scale. This is the Gerber Asada. Now this thing, D2, we we know it's got the, uh, the Asada has a very similar blade shape to the flat iron. Flat yeah, iron. Cleaver, cleaver yes. blade shape. Cleaver-esque, as you might say. Um, I took a photo of this earlier today I did, and actually. I was actually pleasantly surprised. It's actually really well built. And it's that's a frame lock like the like the flat iron, right? Right. Yeah. Frame frame lock. Stainless steel, but still frame lock, pretty <clears throat> awesome. Right. <clears throat> Man, excuse me. Uh D2 steel, it's a 3-inch blade, 44.99 on the website and I will say it fits my hand real nice even when you choke up. Mm -hmm. I almost, I'm almost pinching the knife between my index and middle, hmm. and then, oh man, that's actually really nice. Yeah, and to be honest, the Asada is, the size for me is just right, where the flat iron was a little big. I enjoyed the flat iron a lot, especially because it was one of the first budget cleavers, right? Right. Really enjoyed it. But with the Asada, it, it feels a little more carryable, like a little more like EDC friendly. It's a little bit lighter, it's right. just a little bit smaller, right? But a lot of the same profiles that made the flat iron such a cool knife. Right, D2, Micarta, Gerber, it's actually really nice. Uh, if you guys are into this knife, I would say definitely get one in your hands. Um, I like the ability yeah. to choke up and actually have it like, man, good luck. Like I have full access to that blade. That's, yep. that's a good knife. 45 bucks on the website, the Gerber Asada. And it's on sale right now. It is on sale. Yeah, most of the brand, most of the Gerber brand right now is on holiday sale. So if you've been waiting to get a Gerber or Asada or whatever, it doesn't have to be that, even 06 Auto, Strong Arms, everything. Tons of stuff on sale on the website on the Gerber category. So kind of cool. Um, we're also doing an Epic Yeti giveaway. Uh, yeah, Gerber, we are. Pretty sweet. So basically if you spend every $20 you spend on the website, enters you to win an Epic Yeti giveaway. It's like 20, over $20,000 in Yeti. So it's like what, three Yeti coolers? Yeah, right? I think it's three coolers <laughs> and a cup. Yeah, three coolers <laughs> and a cup is about 20 grand in Yeti. No, we're really excited though. And, it's, and that's also, um, it's any, you can buy anything on the website for 20 bucks, but it's, uh, Gerber is the one that provided the Yeti stuff, which is pretty cool. So really cool website going on. Um, let's see, we're gonna go on to the next knife. You're gonna see a few MKM knives on the table because Italy does a really good job with their micarta and they do a really good job with their blade materials as well. And they make a nice knife. Right. Um, so this is the Voxnez Tamavo, um, obviously micarta handle. <laughs> <laughs> M390 blade on this. I mean, it looks like a Vox. Like you, I wouldn't even have to tell you that this is a Vox design for you to be like, oh yeah, like yeah, that's a Jesper Vox in his design, right? Yeah. Um, he just has such a good distinguished style. Nice uh, wire pocket clip, obviously not full deep carry, but nice wire pocket clip. Um, just a nice blade design all the way around. Now this is made by MKM. So MKM is, I think they say a consortium. It's a consortium brand. I love that word. Like, I don't, I don't ever use that in English, but it's a consortium brand. So basically, um, similar to Solingen, Germany, where it's like the knife center of Germany in that part of Europe. Um, Maniago is, Maniago Knife Makers is what MKM stands for. Maniago is the knife center of that part of like Italy and like surrounding areas there in Europe. And um, so MKM has a bunch of knives made by a bunch of different people and then they put it under the MKM brand, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So this one in particular is made by uh, Makita. So this is made by Makita Knives for MKM, Jesper Vox and his design. A lot of stuff to know there. The big thing to know is nice micarta handle, M390 blade, goes for $169.99 on the website. And you'll get that with any MKM. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Nice handle, yep. good blade steel. Yep, good fit and finish. And then you make with this stuff. one you have the, the, the nice subtle jimping along the back of the spine. This is something I love in Jesper Vox and his design. They're meant to just be choked up on, similar like you were saying without a Sada, just get a good bite on them, you know? Um, See, so yeah. the uh, the old Tamavo, great knife from MKM. Nice. I have a Civiti up next, and it's got an awesome name. It's the Hooligan. Yes, the Civiti <laughs> Hooligan. Now it's a three-inch blade, and micarta scales. What? What? Wait, it has micarta scales? Oh my gosh! Goodness gracious! It's micarta. <laughs> 
No, Mike Carter and you know Civivi and we blade centering's perfect. Great action. Got a deep carry pocket clip, liner lock, three inch blade, seven inch overall, 55 bucks. Yeah. D there's a lot of D2 and micarta. You'll yep. see that trend as we keep When going. you get into those sub $100 knives, right? You get your D2 and you get your micarta. And it, when it comes to a budget steel, man, D, the D2's my jam. Like I like I like D2. Right. So I like to see it in these knives. I mean, like with this QSP, it's freaking 30 bucks and you get D2 and micarta. Or you get something like the Hooligan, a little bit more knife, right? And 50 bucks for that one. Right. Yeah. Uh, this thing in my hand is more of a three finger knife, mm -hmm. even though it, I mean, my hand should, but fit the whole thing, but yeah. my pinky kind of falls off on the end. Um, I do like the ramp with the jimping though. Yeah. And it's a, it's just a nice knife. Now I see that it's got some choils on it. Does it, does it force your hand into a position or is it still fairly comfortable? I feel like it's comfortably forced, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, like, there's definitely grooves, yeah. and my fingers fit in there. There's just not one for the pinky, and right. I think that's why it rolls off. Yeah. But holding it in my hand, that's right where my fingers line up. Cool. So, so still fairly comfortable, yeah. even for a bigger hand. Yeah. Cool. It's a good one. Uh, that's the Hooligan for $55. All right. On. All right, this next one I don't know a ton about. I just grabbed it off the shelf because it had my card. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so uh, this next one is, it's a Maverick Customs, and this is a compact clip point fixed blade. So it, I don't know. I, don't I was, I was it's, playing with that. It's, it's a Maverick fun. Customs. That's, that's what, what we're looking at. Um, this particular one has a W2 steel. Obviously, it's a clip point blade. And this does have the more polished micarta that we were talking about before. You'll see this with Bark River as well. Yep. And uh, I'm actually interested to know from you guys, I've never had a high polished micarta handle. I've never used one for an extensive period of time. And so I wonder if you still get the same benefits that you get with micarta. So obviously some of the benefits of micarta, you get a really nice grip. It feels, the, the word I want to use is like organic, right? Like it, yeah. it just feels kind of like it's raw, earthy in your hands, like a nice feel in your hands. And then also when micarta gets wet, it uh, it swells and it becomes actually even more grippy, which is pretty cool. Right. Uh, grippier, grippier, grippiest. Grip, it becomes grip high. <laughs> grip, grip high. <laughs> but um, with the Maverick Customs, uh, you do get the polished micarta. So like I said, down in the comments and live chat, let me know if you've had polished micarta and how it, uh, how it runs out. And then again, uh, W2 blade, it's got some cool heat treat marks here. Um, it's kind of a neat knife. Like I said, I don't know much about Maverick Customs, but it was my Carta, it was something different. I wanted to throw it on the table and show it off to you guys. I also like the presentation just with the sheath, right? Like oh, yeah. a nice Kydex sheath, you always see the black. Man, you put that blue with the brass and the black and the brown, like the whole thing just it's looks unique. good. It it's is. very unique. It's really, really unique. Um, and uh, you know, it's just a handsome knife. Now, it is uh, custom. Right, so this particular knife does go for four hundred dollars. So it's not a cheap knife by any measure, um, but a really neat knife. Uh, you can carry it scout carry if you want to. That's the way it comes pre set up, and then, and then with this sheath, I'm sure that you can modify it, put a ulti clip or whatever on it, and do whatever you want with it. So cool knife from Maverick Customs. I'm gonna have to check them out. Like I, it's like a vague familiar name, but like it's right. I'm not bringing to mind who it is that runs. Well, Maverick. we we carry so many different knives Dude, that yeah when we're trying to find something unique that mm -hmm. people haven't seen, it's yeah. most of the time we haven't seen it either. <laughs> exactly. You know, so it's like, it, I, I think, think it's like 20,000, we have like 20,000 knives, like 20,000 skews. I think you know? it's awesome. So yeah, yeah it's crazy. But anyways, I love it because cool other than the bug out, I feel like it's not so repetitive. Do you <laughs> right. know what I mean? Anyway, I had to put the bug out name in there. Uh, I have the Shikra from Ontario Knife Co. Now it's Oz8 steel. You've got your milled micarta. Um, it's actually milled pretty well. It does add some grip. The micarta is actually fairly grippy, at least for my hand. It is a frame lock with a deep carry pocket clip. I like it because it's a slimmer knife, mm -hmm. which yeah. I know is weird, but lately I've been trending to slimmer knives. I've actually been carrying some slip joints and stuff, huh. but not today. This thing is cool, guys. It's a three and a quarter inch blade and good looking micarta. It's like a, it's almost like a black wash yeah. stone, stone wash. It's got a, like a black wash to it. Black wash blade. How much does it go for again? $45 hairs. So here's a neat note about that. Teach me. 
That's a titanium frame lock knife. Shut the front door. It is. So that, that back side is, so you got micarta on the front, nice micarta on the front, and then titanium frame lock for how much again? $45. $45. It's actually crazy. So, you know. I didn't know it was titanium. Yeah. I, at first I was like, uh. This was, yeah, right here on the page, yep. titanium. This is one of the knives that Jamie got really excited about. I don't know, really. I don't want to oversell it. He's probably over here giving me a bad look. I don't want to oversell Jamie's emotions. But I will say, <laughs> Jamie got excited about this knife at SHOT Show because it, the micarta, the titanium frame lock, it's like less than 50 bucks. Right. That's a, that's, I'm 99% sure that is a first in the knife world. Yeah, it's a good knife. I really, I like it. I like the slim design. It's, uh, it's cool. Yeah. Really cool. 45 bucks. Cool. Um, so we got a couple shout outs here. Wyatt uh, Ko uh, Koalenko. I think Graham sent me the hardest name on purpose. <laughs> Wyatt. Uh, Wyatt said, hey, Graham, can I please have a shout out? Wyatt, thanks for being here, buddy. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, we're hoping that we just have a good time tonight, hang out, and, and talk some Talk some of, at least some of my favorite handle material. Oh, I forget. Yeah. I love my I love my Carter. Um, Ace Merrill, hey, uh, he's watching live. Um, I guess people keep asking for the weight of the knives. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this, Kurt. <laughs> the reality is, is the weight of these knives, most of these knives, it doesn't matter because does. they're not built for weight. <laughs> I can't believe you put that evil know, on us. I don't know why. I just, I marked the weight and I was like, oh, maybe uh, yeah, that'll be a good throw the weight point. <laughs> for that big gold CT knife. <laughs> and then uh, Ryan Alvarado, he said, uh, he gave, he said, hey, Graham. And then he says, can I get a shout out and tell Kurt and Zach what's up from Cali? Hey, man, what's up from Cali? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, guys, for tuning in live. And, uh, you know, we're getting to about the halfway-ish point. So if you guys want to start sending Graham some of your pocket dumps, we'll show you guys what's in our pockets. I know some of you guys were disappointed in my weekly pick that I didn't show my all of my pockets. So I will show all of my pockets tonight. Because um, on the weekly pick, I just showed you the one knife I was carrying. So. Uh, anyways, you went last, so I it's did. my turn now. I think it is your turn. This is another cool one that we've never had on Banter or WoW before. Um, again, I don't know a lot about this one, um, but it's it's a, a lockback knife with a really cool green micarta handle. And the cool thing with this micarta on this one is it walks the line between a high polish and then more of that like rag micarta feel. Okay. So it's it's smooth, but it's still grippy, right? You still get a yeah. good grip. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting about this is just kind of the general design. Like it looks, it's it looks very traditional. You've got this jimping across the back end here. Again, it's a little more raised, but not so raised that it's sharp because um, it's close enough together to just pr provide some grip. And this is the Castillo. I'm 99% sure. I'm gonna give me one second, guys. I want to make sure this is this is a. I'm pretty sure this is made in Spain. It is. So this is made in Spain. So this is the Castillo Navaja. So when I worked construction, I think it means razor. I think that's the direct translation. I don't speak Spain Spanish, but I speak a little bit Spanish. of Spanish. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I don't speak Spanish. I speak a little bit of construction Mexican. <laughs> and so in uh, in construction, when we needed a knife, it'd be like, hey, you know, dónde está la navaja, right? And this is called the navaja, which I thought was pretty cool. That's cool. Um, but anyways, uh, you get this is a, a 14 cr, sorry, 14 c 28 n steel. So um, this is a fairly tough edge. This one has a fairly tough edge, good edge retention, and it won't chip. So it's not like a, a 13, 8CR, 13MOV. It's not an 8CR knife. Um, this is actually like a fairly nice steel. It's got this cool micarta handle. It comes with a leather lanyard on it. Nice lockback uh, construction. Goes for $109 on the website. Is the micarta rounded? I'm trying to see from it is over no, here. It, it's not as rounded as the as the there can be only one battle horse. There can only be <laughs> the Highlander, but it does. It's it is it is formed a little bit, and it's got these brass pins in it. Oh, that's uh, cool. It's it's a really neat knife, like really like kind of a traditional design. I mean, modern traditional. That's the word, right? It's it's a modern traditional for sure. Made out of Spain again. Castillo knives. I don't know much about Castillo knives, so I was kind of stoked to find this in my carta and be able to throw it here on WoW and. Show you guys some cool stuff. If you know something about Castillo, let us know. So it locks. It's not a slip joint. Yep, full on, full lock back. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's neat little knife. Really cool one. Um, so 109 bucks on the website. I think that's right in line with the materials. I think that's right in line with it being like cool, made you know, made in Spain. And uh, yeah, cool knife, modern traditional. All right, guys. I have a ballast song. This is the Peña song. <laughs> Gosh, every time you give me a heart attack when you do that. <laughs> this is 
<laughs> the Penny Knives Mid-Tech Penny Song. Now, this is a really cool butterfly knife. Uh, I'm not really big into flipping. I like to play with it and, and flip it around a little bit, but this thing is super smooth. It's got these really cool uh, micarta inserts. To me, I think the really unique thing about this knife that puts it sets it apart from other ballets, it's got these really deep choils and kind of a thick, thicker blade. Wow, the blade stock on that is actually kind of thick. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a big boy. But it's cool. Uh, titanium, micarta, and then you have CPM 154 steel. This thing is not for the faint of heart. No, it's a it Pena is, and it's a mid-tech. So. It's a mid-tech, yeah. so $475 and you can have yourself a little piece of beauty. But I will say for those elite flippers out there, and I, I don't know how this lines up with like a BRS or lines up with a HOM, right. but for those elite flippers out there, 475, that's normal. Yeah, that's like, that's in the same price range. That's what they're paying for, you know, diff different Balasong knives. I mean, it's on the higher end, but they are paying that much for Balasong. So if you're not a flipper and you don't know much about the ballet community, that's actually not insane for a nice Balasong knife. Right. Like it's it's pretty in line with what the pricing is up there. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool one. It feels different in your hand. It's a little, I would say it feels a little thicker than the average Bally for most flippers, but yeah. it is real close and it is extra cool with the micarta inlays. I had to grab it. I was like, dude, a balasong with micarta, we've got it. Like if we're doing a micarta, like oh, wow, yeah. we gotta have a balasong with micarta, right? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> no, that's a good one. It's cool. 475 bucks. <laughs> Right on. Um, all right. So next up, I have a Buck One Ten or Buck One Twelve Slim Pro. Um, this knife has got a CPM S Thirty V blade, micarta handle. It's nice lock back, you know, one twelve construction. Nice deep carry pocket clip, and um, it goes for eighty bucks. Made in the United States. S Thirty V blade, micarta handle, deep carry pocket clip, nice lock back. I mean, everything's there. Made in the USA, and it's eighty bucks. I think this is a really, That's really cool. cool knife. Now I will say, this is the slim, so I'll give you guys the weight on this one. <laughs> since Kurt's since Kurt's gonna do this. Oh man, I can't even find the weight. 2.8 ounces, it's 2.8 ounces, right? So 2.8 ounces on the uh, on the Slim Pro. The micarta feels really nice. I really like the 112, I really like the 110, so it falls right in line with what I already like. I will say, one thing that I do know about these knives though, is this pocket clip. Can, there can, there's some division on this pocket clip. What do you think of this pocket clip? What's your opinion? It's I personally don't like a really wide mm -hmm. pocket clip. Yeah, yeah. It takes up a lot of real estate. Yep, I agree. I'm I'm with you. I really like the 112. I really like the 110. I like the micarta on this. For S30V, I think this is right. the. I think this for like material to price. This is probably the best bang for your buck on the table. Probably. Um, but definitely that pocket clip for me is a little like, eh, you know, it's not the end of the world, but eh, a little slimmer would be nice. Right. You know? um, let me know what you guys think about this pocket clip. I've heard both sides. I've heard guys be like, oh, I love it. I heard guys be like, no, no way. Yeah. <laughs> I think I fall right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I'm not crazy about it. I have an MKM and it's a beaut. I don't know how to say this correctly, Ziba? Ziba? So Ziba's the designer, but I think that's the flame, isn't it? No. The MK oh, flame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ziba. Ziba flame. Yeah, drop yeah, yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just don't know, guys. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say about it. <laughs> All right, guys. Titanium micarta. You got a milled pocket clip. It's a frame lock. This thing's really cool. M390 steel. So again, Titanium, Micarta, M390, MKM. MKM. Yeah, MKM. That's just MKM's recipe. jam. Yep. I do like the little brass collar here. And this thing is, it reminds me of a Kaiser Feist. Yeah, it's, but got, it's got a is, bit of that Kaiser to it for sure. Right, yeah, but yeah. It, it does have the very small, which I actually like, mm -hmm. very small tail here for the flipper action. And one thing I like about this, I like the Feist a lot. I think we have a Feist on the table. Yep. Um, I like the Feist a lot, but one thing I like about this in particular is kind of going back to that rounded thing. This is, is interesting. I wonder if it's a micarta thing. I'm realizing there's quite a few rounded knives on the table. It's very contoured. Yeah, but that one does. It has a lot of contour. Even the titanium side is rounded out, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's really smooth. It feels really good in the hand, but you still get that raw texture mm -hmm. to the uh, micarta, which is nice, especially 
for me personally, if I have a titanium knife or, and I can add in something that's not just titanium, because titanium, if you're really working your hands, gets sweaty or yeah, whatever. It, it gets slippery, man. Right, it gets yep. slippery. But the micarta, that's why I love it, man. It just, no slip, it's beautiful, and just patinas like crazy. Yeah, and that's the thing is going back to like the Liang Mai did out the gate or going back to that Kaiser, what was it called again? The Your kid makes fun of you for it? The, oh, oh, the clutch. The clutch, yeah, yeah, the Kaiser clutch. That's something that's 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 an application of micarta I really love. Like a solid, just full micarta handle is great, fine. But I'm with you. I like when it's integrated in with titanium because then I get the frame lock, right? Right. Because when you go with a full, I mean, if it's not a lockback, like the Buck or like this Castillo knife, right? If it's not one of these versions with a lockback, you're gonna get a liner lock, right? right. With micarta. Yeah. And so Nine I really like I really like that titanium side. If you're looking to spend a little more money. I like a good frame lock. So yeah, I'm with you. It's it's a nice accent to a titanium knife. It really is. And this knife comes in at 2.54 ounces. Ooh, good to know. <laughs> and you can own it for $184.90. Dude, that knife looks like way smaller than the buck, but it's like the same weight as the buck. Yeah. I When you were saying that, I was actually looking Crazy. at this. I was like, yeah. oh, wow. Interesting. That's very interesting. <laughs> All right, so, guys, yeah. um, we are, I'm going to do this. I got a fixed blade. I'm going to do this fixed blade, and then we're going to do some pocket checks. So load up Graham with your pocket checks. Graham, don't fail us, buddy. This is this is, this is is ride or die right now, buddy. Like, <laughs> Graham may not be at the next wow. So load him up with some pocket dumps. <laughs> Just kidding. We love Graham. He's doing a great job. <laughs> All right, so this is the Kaiser Butcher fixed blade, um, obviously in micarta. So it's a 154 cm blade. You get uh, these micarta handles, and it's just one of these, it's an EDC uh, cleaver knife, right? Right. That's all it is. That's 100%. It's like a two, maybe three finger. Um, I can get three fingers on there. I think for you, it'd be more of a two finger knife. But the choils here are nice and big, so I think your fingers would probably fit really comfortably nice. um, in the choils. But anyways, um, it's just an EDC cleaver knife. That's all it is. How practical is an EDC cleaver knife? Eh. But also like, it's just super fun, fun though. It's right. super fun, right? No piercing power with this, but you can open boxes all day with a cleaver style blade. I mean, it's like a Warren Cliff or something in that way that it's not great for piercing, but it's great for slicing and cutting and things like that. Um, and it's just, it makes a statement, right? Especially right. like a like a silly little fixed blade like this. I think it's so much fun. I love the small knives that have the big massive cleaver yeah, blades yeah. because it's it's just so far out there it makes it uh, obviously you you have that knife because it's fun exactly and you just want to show off how fun it is yeah i like a good fun knife every once in a while oh for sure um so anyway so this is the uh kaiser butcher it goes for 55 bucks so Not bad. 154 cm my car to handle and then it comes with this uh pr honestly a pretty nice little sheath and uh the clip is positionable so you can change the clip around however you want it to work it's got really nice uh turn to camera Really nice retention on that. Nice. It's a cool knife. And then it goes in, I'm gonna do it wrong. I do normal fixed blades wrong. That's why all my fixed blades have to be ambi sheaths. Cause I'm too <laughs> dumb to put them in right every time. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure, yeah, there it is. So so I'll uh, turn to camera here so you guys can see. So it, that's how it comes in and out. I like so, that. Kind of cool. And I think if you get used to it, see how the head kind of goes in? Yeah. I think when you get used to it, it would actually be pretty quick. Now, similar to like a deep carry bushcraft style sheath, you're not gonna get a really like heavy purchase on just right. pulling it out. You're gonna have to pull it out and then reposition your hand. So for me, that would honestly probably be a deal breaker to carry it, um, but because I don't like the deep carry uh, bushcraft sheets either. Right. But, uh, cool knife from Kaiser though, and uh, 55 bucks. I think that's so cool. I love yeah. the quick draw. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of fun, right? Yeah. All right, so let's do a couple pocket checks. Um, oh man, people are loading Graham up. Good guys, good. You guys are giving Graham job security right now. <laughs> I need to stop joking. He's probably in out there stressed out right now. <laughs> He's honestly great. He's killing yeah, it. Yeah, sorry, buddy. I don't mean to stress you out. I don't mean to stress you out. Um, well, let's kick it off. Kurt, what do you got today? What are you carrying? Ooh, I have two. Okay. Now, the first one is a kind of a custom that I've been waiting on for a long time. Yeah. So it's oh, a yeah. Benchmade Altitude, but I had my good friend Spencer at Carbidize. Mm -hmm. He built me these micarta scales. They're a little square. I wish it was a little smoother. And I'm not like crazy about the hardware, but at the same time, 
I don't really care because it's an altitude with my car to scales. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect knife to have on you for this one. <laughs> this is so awesome. I carry this thing. This is how I have it set up. We we talked about it in uh, the last the wow. The last wow. Yeah, yeah. three yeah. knives everybody should have. Where Everybody brought an altitude. Everybody, right. I was feeling left out. <laughs> I know. I, and that was not planned. We didn't plan that. <laughs> so I finally got my altitude back. I did have to heat up the Kydex a little bit just to get it uh, pushed yeah. over the uh, my carter there. But retention's still good. Retention is still awesome. Great. And then I've got the ulti clip on there. I just clip it onto my gym shorts and it's so light. I don't have the exact ounces, but I, I'll, I'll weigh it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll weigh it. But I love this thing. It is awesome. I'm so excited to have this back in my rotation. And usually I carry this and whatever else is in my pocket. Cool. But I do have another special knife. Oh, okay. Now, this knife, it's a Spyderco Para 3. Oh, I saw this earlier today. <laughs> now, this knife I bought for my dad, who does remodels and he paints and he does literally everything. The guy is jack of all trades. He yeah. just does it. I gave this to him about a year and a half ago. And this is just everyday use patina. Right. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I don't know I, if I, you can't fake this. Is it patina? Is it everyday use patina or is it everyday abuse patina? <laughs> you know what? It, I feel like abuse and use is different yeah. per person, For right? Sure. Because maybe I work in an office and I'm only cutting open Amazon boxes and my cup of noodles or whatever. Yeah. Well, if you work in an office and your knife looks like this, like you're abusing your knife. Right. right? Oh yeah. But if you're a tradesman every day working on, and it's oh, just yeah. another tool in your tool belt. Exactly. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. This thing, man, I built this out for him. I had a, a Lynch Northwest clip on it. Mm -hmm. Looks like it got a little uh, roughed in the pocket. <laughs> Maybe it just fell off in the truck. I have no clue, but he sent it to me, he's like, sharpen it and send it back. And I was like, sweet, okay, so I'm gonna put a clip on it, I'm gonna sharpen it up. He has taken, I, this is my guess, and I'm calling him out right here, live. Yeah. My guess is that he tried to pry. For sure. And he had to pull some of the profile up on the blade yep. to get past maybe a snap tip. I don't know. But this thing has seen some love and it is, it's so cool to give a knife that's brand new, you know, and then to see it a couple years later that he literally t carries this every single day. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a workhorse, man. That's awesome. It's a cool one. All right, um, we've got a couple shout outs here. Um, let's see. Avo uh, Dub says that he just picked up a bug out and a huntsman. Nice. Great choices, man, great choices. Um, Lucas Barth is watching li live. What's up, Lucas? Ross, uh, Ross Young. Uh, the way that Graham put it in it was says Ross Young pocket dump. I'm like, that's a cool name for a pocket dump. <laughs> <laughs> but Ross Young, he says he's got a Kershaw link in 20 CV. That's my favorite link. Buck 505, a classic Victorinox, a Civivi hook keychain tool, a refined pen, a field book, a key smart, a bandana, and chapstick. Man, and he's I'm ready. ready. He's ready. I need more pockets. <laughs> that's that's cargo pocket carry right Seriously. there. <laughs> uh, Lucas uh, Barth Morrow. He's got an Eldris Rat 2 wallet, keys, and AirPods. Ooh, he's a rich man. Got rich man, AirPods. AirPods. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, so Kurt has some AirPods, and we make fun of him that when he has them in, he's too rich to hear us. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gage... Uh, Kurtner, he's got a Spyderco smock and a Victorinox Super Tinker. Nice. Great carry. Uh, I, I always have a Victorinox in my pocket. Always. No no questions asked. Marshall Gibson, uh, he said, Graham! <laughs> he's got a Benchmade 940, a Sabenza 21 with Micarta. Nice. My man. Heck we were going to yeah. put one on, but it's like, you guys have seen Sabenza with Micartas a lot, so we wanted to give space for some of the stuff you haven't seen as much. And, um, and a Micartic Rustic Gent. My card nice. rustic gent. So hey, that's a good carry. That's a good carry, man. I that's like a, that. He's got the seat. slip joint. He's got the the user. Yeah. yeah that's Heck great. yeah. Um, John Clary Grant. Uh, John Clary. He says he's got a Tonto Griptilian and S30V and a Leatherman Micra and an O Light. I'm I'm thinking about carrying a Leatherman Micra. I've been thinking about it, but I don't know yet. We'll see. So um, let's see those, John. John Clary, let me know if you like your micro. I mean, obviously you're carrying it, but there's a difference between, I carry stuff a lot because I like to test things out for you guys and be able to like 
have an informed opinion and not just talk about specs. Um, so let me know if you enjoy that. I've, I've been thinking about carrying a micro for a little while. Um, cool, we got a couple more. Let me, I'll do my pocket check really quick. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so I have uh, a h &K Mini Access. This is, I'm not gonna call it my first knife love, but I'm gonna, I am gonna say this is my first like knife guy knife. For sure, this is my first knife guy knife. I drooled over this at the knife shop for probably two years before I actually was able to buy it. And uh, I love, 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 love this knife. When I bought this knife, I was like, I don't need to buy any other knives ever again. And to be honest, like I always was like looking at knives and enjoying right. knives, but I would just be like, man, I've got, I've got my HK Mini X. Yeah. Right? But then I started working here and I was like, okay, now I need to buy one. <laughs> But uh, really great knife. Benchmade doesn't make this anymore. HK is now made by Hogue Knives. They do a great job making them, but nobody makes the mini axis right now. Hogue, if you're listening, let's do a mini axis, buddy. <laughs> Neil, if you're out there, let's do a mini axis. Um, I love this knife. I've been carrying it recently just because um, this knife and the Chavez Redencion with micarta um, are two knives that feel just absolutely, like actually perfect. Like they were made for me. Um, those are the only two knives I've ever found that just like, I could carry them every single day and never think about another knife. Um, this knife and then the Chavez Redencion. Great you want, knives. You wanna know what's interesting? Here at Blade HQ, we all carry knives, right? That's just a thing. Yeah. But I walked past Zach's office the other day and I was saw it in his pocket, just the clip, and I was like, oh, you got the HK today, huh? And he's like, yep. Yep. <laughs> I love that. You always have cool stuff in your pocket. Yeah, I try to. And then since I missed it uh, for the a weekly pick, I've got my uh, my Phoenix E12 in pocket with the uh, uh, with the hair tie. Now I had I had some people I had a pocket dump on my personal Instagram the other day, and some people were asking like why the hair tie. So if you don't know, the reason I have the hair tie is if I need to be hands free and I don't want to keep the the light in my mouth the whole time I'm working on a, something on the side of the road, um, I use the hair tie to connect it to my glasses which is really cool. That's genius. And then the other cool thing with the hair tie is, no joke, this will impress women. If you're somewhere and a, 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 a woman friend or whatever is like, I oh, wish I had a hair tie. Wish I had a hair tie to put my hair up and you pull a hair tie out, bro, you are Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's twofold, twofold on that one. And then I've got my Victorinox Compact, my beautiful, beautiful Victorinox Compact every single day. This is probably my most used tool of all time at this point because of how much I use this thing. And then I've got this pen I picked up at Duluth Trading. Uh, it's called True Utility. And uh, it's just like, it's a, like a twist pen. It's got a stylus thing on the end, which I've already ruined. Uh, it's got a little, it's got a little screwdriver inside. And then it has a level that I've actually used the level a couple times. Are you serious? I really have used the level a couple times, which was kind of fun. So um, the only reason I'm carrying this is I've, I've already fixed it. So that's the only reason I'm saying this out loud now is I ran over my Pete's Pirate Life copper pen oh that I love. And when you run over copper the pens, they deform a little bit. And I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want I didn't want Pete to hear and then Pete like sent me another pen. I would feel bad about that, right? right? So anyways, Pete, I'm taking care of your pen that you sent me. I really appreciate it. Check out Pete's Pirate Life on Instagram. Great guy. <laughs> so you ran it over in the van. Yeah, I ran it over with my van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if Should you guys, we talk about Vanter? Yes, you we, need, <laughs> we need to bring up Vanter. Okay. It is such a stellar idea. <laughs> All right, so this actually, we can't take credit. This was Carson's idea. So our other video guy, Carson, um, I recently picked up a 1979 uh, GMC, is a G1500 van. So it's like a shorty van. So like picture the mystery machine, but not like the mystery machine cool. <laughs> I recently picked that up and uh, Carson, he was like, dude, we should shoot a Vanter where we shoot a knife banter inside of the van and we talk about adventure knives or something. So I'm gonna put the vote to you guys. If you guys want the Vanter, let us know and down in the comments, let us know in the live chat. We'll make it happen if you guys are interested. In it. Heck yeah, please. It's, we just need... a, it's just a dirty, broke down van. <laughs> we need a Vanter and that van is epic. It's really cool, I like it. Uh, anyways, so a couple more shout outs here. Um, we got, uh, let's see. Brock Pryor, he's carrying a SOG Terminus XR. Um, nice. And a uh, minimalist with green micarta, right on. Nice. We almost had a minimalist on the table, we decided not to. And those those XR locks on the SOGs, man, or SOGs, the SOG XR, XR lock, they're they're primo, man. I really like them. Yeah, they are. Nice. Um, Drew Uplegger is an electrician. He carries a Leatherman Surge, like he should. That's the best Leatherman, I'm just gonna say it. In my opinion. <laughs> uh, a Sharpie, a Benchmade 940, and a Trayvax wallet. 
great carry. Um, KF Boston's got a hinder in his pocket. Jacob Gregory has got a Medford baller. That's a that's a big old tough knife. Um, and a Protec Sprint. Ryan uh, C has a pair of three with blue jean micarta scales. Nice. I'm liking all the micarta that I'm seeing. And then Al Alberto Aguera says he's got an Actinon Verba Z200. Thanks to Blade HQ, guys. Actinon Verba is making some cool knives. So we bumped. I bumped into. Uh, I bumped into the maker of Actinon Verba at Shot Show, and I had heard about him already from. I think it was Ken Onion and Tim Reeve. And when Ken Onion and Tim Reeve are telling you about a knife maker. You pay attention. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, just and, a little bit. And uh, we recently got some of his production stuff in and it sold out like the same day. So keep your eye out for Actin on Verba. We'll have some more stuff coming soon. Um, we got some budget production stuff and it was like 70 bucks. Nice little knives. They I think were it was cool. like N690 G10 or something like that. Good little knives. So. Yeah, they're way nice. Um, now I will say we've, we've had a little too much fun this while because uh, we came in a little underprepared so we've been chatting a lot. So we are getting close to what we would normally do an hour. We still have some knives on the table. So Graham, let us know what people say, live chat. If you want us to stay live for a little bit longer, we'll blow through a few more knives. We'll just hang out, have some more laughs. Um, if you guys are done with this, then we can be done with it. So let us know in the live chat. Graham, uh, let me know here what people are saying. <laughs> all right, I've been talking a lot because I've been doing all the call outs. Kurt, say something, show, show us some knives. What's your next knife on the table? I've got a knife, I've got a CJRB Feldspar. Oof. Talk about bang for your buck. Oof. <clears throat> I love this knife. D2 steel, you got your mic carter, you got your brass barrel spacers, deep carry pocket clip, you got the collar that matches and ties it all in. I love this knife. It's a really good knife. <laughs> I really, I think this was one, for me, this was one of the sleepers that came out mm -hmm. this year and I was like, what? Yep. This is a good knife, fits perfect in my hand. It's three and a half inch blade. D2 steel, 3.67 ounces for those of you who are Dude, I counting. Was, I was worried it was gonna be 3.5. I wanted it to be a little bit heavier, you know? Yeah, yeah, so we, we got it with the 3.6. Love it, love it. Yeah, <laughs> and honestly, this is just a good all around use for everything knife. You get your drop point blade, your liner lock, deep carry, it, honestly, for 52.95. Yeah. For 52.95, I can't, I, dude, I'm telling you guys right now, honestly, like no BS, this is a really good knife. If you guys want to get into a good knife that is, has great ergos for a good price, D2 my Carter for 52 bucks. Yeah. And this is the other thing with, you said sleeper, and I would agree, when I saw that originally, I think the first time I saw that was on the website. It doesn't have a profile that attracts me. Like it's not a profile right. it, of a knife that I'd normally like. It's nothing like. crazy. It's not, and it looks smaller on the website even, right? Right. I mean, when you look at the specs, you can get an idea, but when you, but you're right, when you get it and you open it and you feel it and you put it in your hand, you're just like, oh wow, this is actually like really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a good knife. So that's the Feldspar from CJRB. Right on. All right, next up I have a Benchmade knife and this is a fixed blade. So this is the Benchmade Pardue Hunter. Um, it comes in an S30V blade, obviously full tang, beautiful micarta, and a nice leather sheath, all made in the USA by uh, our buddies over at Benchmade Knives. And this thing is discontinued, so they're not making them anymore. We bought basically everything they had left. <laughs> so if you want to get yourself a nice micarta fixed blade, and um, this is S30, not S35, an S30V steel, now is the time. These are going for 150 bucks on the website. So really good price for a uh, for the materials, really good price for made in the USA. And then of course it's bench made, so the quality's right up there. Um, just really, really, really stellar. Um, I would wonder how this sheath will wear though, because uh, it's- It's softer. It's, it's a softer- It's almost like a semi-suede. It's almost suede. And, and by wear, I think you're not gonna have a problem with the sheath. It's not gonna fall apart on you at all. Um, Benchmade actually makes really good sheaths. Um, but because it's almost a suede, I wonder like how like how will it attract like stains and water and well, stuff like that. And you think of like okay, if you have swedish leather boots or whatever, yeah. they get scuffed easy, yeah. and so maybe it will have a very unique and look patina, cool. yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. exactly, it could be really cool. Um, and it does have the deeper sheath to it. Again, I'm not a huge fan of this because I don't like pulling out a knife and then having to reposition. Right. That's just me. But I know a lot of guys like that deeper carry because um, it, it carries higher up on the hip. It stays out of the road more. Um, like I said, 150 bucks on the website. Benchmade knife. It's good to go. 
And uh, it looks like Graham is... He says yes. People want us to keep going. All right, so, <laughs> let's do it. We'll blow through. We'll blow through the rest of the knives we have on the table. We do have an epic giveaway at the end of this thing, so hold on for the epic giveaway as well. And uh, more my card to come. Heck yeah! <laughs> All right, I got the next one. This is a Smith and Sons Cypress Trapper. This is a unique knife. It almost feels buck esque, like kind of like a buck. It, yeah, but. I think, and I think that's more like the traditional with the clip point, mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know. But Smith & Sons, they they make awesome knives. Obviously we got Micarta, we got D2 Steel. It's just a regular pocket clip, no deep carry, which maybe is a miss, but not all people like deep carries. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is a cool one. It's a, it's, it's interesting. It feels like an old knife I would have gotten from my grandpa or something. Yeah, that's the thing is the blade to handle ratio feels very traditional, right? Oh it, yeah. It actually reminds me of a case, is what it reminds oh, me yeah. of, right? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Reminds big me of, handle, mm -hmm. smaller blade big, with bigger the clip handle. point. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's so this is a great knife, guys. Comes in at 4.32 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> and it's $130 on the website. <laughs> Get yourself a Cypress Trapper. <laughs> and Smith & Son, they're made in the USA, is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, USA made, right? Maybe. Doesn't say, but doesn't say. I'm I, I'm I'm like ninety nine. Yeah, I'm pretty. Sure. I'm pretty sure. I always check the website, but uh, I'm pretty sure. All right. So next up, we have a Riotti knife. Now, I really like Riotti's stuff. Um, I was just saying uh, earlier today, Riotti makes some good knives in and of themselves. This is um, the Barucha. T3000, so it's the T3000, Bowler M390 blade, titanium construction. Um, again, similar to what we saw with the um, Liang Ma knife, it's just enough texture in the micarta that you get a little bit of grip, but it's not dissonant from the titanium. Nice. Um, you get this nice little colored accent right here. This is integral. Oh, no, it's not integral. Ooh, that's a good line though. So it is, it is screwed together, it's not integral, but the machining on it's incredible. I was gonna say, you, from here it looks you can, solid. Yeah, you can barely see it. I mean, maybe if I get in the, the light right, you guys will be able to see it easier at home, but um, I really like some of the stuff that Riotti does, or Riot. I always get made fun of for how I said it. I've always said it Riotti. Is that not right? Is it Riot? I don't know, I say Riot. Yeah, Riot, Riotti. you say Riot? Riotti, Riotti. So this, this really cool uh, Riotti. Yeah. <laughs> That'll make a lot of people happy. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's called um, Riate. <laughs> with these, uh, again, really cool accents. Now, uh, we actually have to eat our words because we were speaking, we were talking about how it's hard to get micarta on both sides of a knife. And when you do, it's gonna be a liner lock. This is a frame lock with micarta on both sides of the knife. So That's a unicorn. There it is, it's a unicorn. Um, but like I was saying, oh, and this knife goes for 310 bucks, so it's definitely not a cheap but one. But you pay for the quality and that action, and yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is that is pocket jewelry to me? Exactly. Um, Riot, Riotti, uh, they do a lot of OEM work in the knife world. So, for example, my uh, Chavez Redencion, the one that I love so much, yep. it's a Riotti. That's a, that's a Riot knife. Like, um, there's probably a few on the table that are also made by them, just badged for other other people. So whether it's from the company directly or an OEM knife, uh, or OE knife, OEM, OEM knife. OEM. Um, either way, they make a stellar knife. So you can pick this one up for 310 bucks. You get some nice car uh, micarta accents and then full titanium construction. All right, guys, I have a Civivi Rustic Gent. It's a lockback folder, which is cool. It's, it's very traditional-esque looking, modern traditional, I guess yeah. we'll say. Um, you got your clip point blade, it's D2 steel. You've got carbon fiber right here, mm. carbon fiber bolster. And then this is a very interesting type of micarta. It's very raw. It feels raw. Now I'm gonna have, I wanna look at the paper just so I don't screw it up. Um, what was the knife? A couple, it was like a, Maybe it was last wow where I was like, it's almost like a rubbery micarta. Was it the Tarot Tough? Maybe. The, on the Guardian 3? So, yes. So Guardian makes a, uh, the, uh, the Bradford, the Bradford right. Guardian 3. So Bradford makes a knife called the Guardian 3 and they use a Tarot Tough material. Now Tarot Tough is very similar to micarta. Right. Some cool things about Tarot Tough though is that it's less toxic when you machine it. 
and it's it's a little more um, shock absorbent. Oh, things are falling over. <laughs> it's a, it's a little more shock absorbent. Oh yeah, uh, tarot, tarot tough is yeah yeah. I I would say that this feels and looks similar to that. It huh. doesn't feel the rubbery, but it is. You still have that rough raw micarta feel. Cool. But it's it's a burlap weave but it's so dark that you can't really tell unless you're really gazing deep into its eyes. Yeah, deep into the soul of the rustic. <laughs> De- ge- <laughs> Kurt's over there gazing in the eyes of a rustic gent. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you guys know the rustic gent. I have one, Zach has one. Yep. They're awesome knives. D2 steel, you got carbon fiber, which adds that little extra class mm-hmm. with the micarta. And this is $77 on the website. And it just shows that we, Civivi, because, you know, Civivi is the, the budget version of the Wii knives, they can do anything. Right. They can make an Elijah Isham awesome, epic kind of art piece knife, and they can make like a traditional lock back gentleman's knife. Right. right. It's just, it was cool. I remember when I saw this, I was like, that is not the knife I thought Civivi would make, but they did it right. Yeah. You know? No, and they, they do. They knock them out of the part. Yeah. And this one is no different. So the Rustic cool. Gent. All right, next one up is one, I've actually got two on my side that I really wanna buy. And this is one of them. And this is the Arcform Catalyst. Ooh, it's so good. It's so good. S35 VN blade, um, titanium construction. Then you get the the micarta inlay only on one side. It's not a unicorn. (laughs) It's not a unicorn, but it's good. Only on one side, but man, I really, really love the Arcform knives generally. But this Catalyst, that again, it's that action, man. Going back to like the the Riot knife and going back to the Leong Ma and then now to the arc form, they just feel so good. Enough weight in the blade. It's I don't really care about drop shut or not. I mean, it does drop shut, but just the weight in the blade, the way that it flips, the way it feels in hand, it's For just sure. really, really good. Yeah, great knife. Now, this is more of a polished micarta on this one. So this one does feel a little more, what's the word? I mean, less organic, right? Refined. Yeah, it feels a little more... Um, yeah, just a little more refined, a little more polished. Because that's exactly what it is. It's a polished micarta. But anyways, uh, Arcform Catalyst, $265 on the website. We have a couple expensive knives. What do you got? Do you have a less expensive knife coming up? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's Heck do that. Yeah. Oh, wait, you just did the Rustic Gent. That's affordable. I, the, knife. Yeah, I was feeling 70. bad because I was like, man, this one was so much. This one's so much. No, I don't want just... you guys to feel like you have to spend a million dollars to get into a nice micarta knife. No, definitely not the case. Okay, guys, this is one that I have never touched. This is the Cancept Knives Gremlin. S35BN steel. Uh, You got your titanium with green micarta inlays. And this green micarta is very green. It's very green. It reminds me of... uh, of Right. uh, This one here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, if if we put it up to this green Gerber, Mm -hmm. the Asada... It's very green, which is, I feel like to color micarta, sometimes it's like, is that green? Or I feel like green is the tricky color. Mm. You either nail it or it's so close to natural or black that, yep. you know, who knows? And honestly, I feel like micarta is one of those things where the color and the the juge comes out after it's been in your hand yep. and it absorbs some of that oil and, you know, it really kind of it adds it instantly patinas to whatever you're doing. And I think this is one of the reasons that I really love micarta is it's 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 kind of a dummy way to like customize your knife, right? Right. Because your micarta knife is going to look completely different than somebody else's micarta knife, even if you're not hard using it, even if you're not your dad with his paint splatters and whatever on right. that. Right. Right. Like six guys pull out a, a black G10 pair of three, great knife, amazing knife. They're all going to look very similar. You know what right. I mean? But six guys pull out any of these micarta knives on the table after they've carried them for a month, they're all going to look different. They're all which I think is kind of cool, right? It's right. kind of a neat way. To, it's like, this is my knife. Yeah, it, this is a cool knife, guys. It's uh, almost just shy of a three-inch blade. It's got a nice slim profile, your milled pocket clip. It is a frame lock. And two and a half ounces. Ooh, two and a half. Good. Two and a half ounces. Ooh. S35EN steel, like I said, and you can get one for $170 on the website. Right on. All right, the next two that I have are a family of knives. One of them is a Blade HQ exclusive and one of them is not. Um, So uh, I will show you the not Blade HQ exclusive first. 
I love the XL Sheepdog. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the XL Sheepdog uh, in, obviously, in, a, in Micarta. This comes with, I want to make sure I have it right, 154 CM blade at $99. This is a lot of knife for hundred bucks, guys. That is a ton this of knife. This is a lot of knife for hundred bucks. So um, XL Sheepdog, super fun knife. When we're talking about weight of the blade, like don't let this thing, don't let your finger be in the road when this thing closes because it it will cut your finger really good. Yeah. <laughs> Kaiser doesn't mess around with their grinds. It they, is stout. Their grind, grinds and sharpening is ne just next level. So um, really neat knife from Kaiser. This is not a Blade HQ exclusive, but it is a really cool knife from Kaiser, XL Sheepdog at 99 bucks with micarta and 154 cm now the blade hq exclusive and also not only is it cool because it's an exclusive it's cool because this is the first time a full-size sheepdog has been in the vanguard series so full shape full-size okay. sheepdogs have always been titanium they've always been you know more expensive this is in the vanguard series it comes with a cts bd1n blade so just kind of a nice um I don't know if I'd call that, a, it's not a carpenter steel, but a knife, like, nice working steel. Um, and uh, micarta handles with a really nice, they've got stainless steel nested liners. That's so cool. It's a really cool knife and it's 89 bucks. That's so awesome. So this is the first time that a full-size Sheepdog has been in the Vanguard series and this is a Blade HQ exclusive. So if you want a full-size Sheepdog and you don't wanna pay, I think they're like 200 plus, 160 plus, um, you can pick yourself up a micarta one for 89 bucks on the website with that CTS BD1N steel. So Kaiser Sheepdogs, and they come in a bunch of different varieties. Those are just the ones we grabbed. We have some really neat uh, varieties on those. The XL only comes in the natural right now. I'm sure I'm sure Kaiser will, will do more. All right, I've got a Leong Ma right here. This Leong Ma is called the Traveler. It has a very interesting micarta to it. Um, the entire scale is micarta, but it's dyed black. I think they actually are separate. Or, or is it a layered micarta that he's just, he's just sanded down and then the blacks come through? I don't know. It looks separated. It's almost like the brown micarta. Mm -hmm is an insert to this outer black frame. Interesting. Because you can see a little bit of a gap. Anyway, I'm not sure, but this thing is really interesting. Um, you got the great pivot that always, it's, a, it's an eye catcher. Um, it's almost like a woven herringbone. Hmm. I'm trying to think fancy herringbone. Well, you own the iPods I, or AirPods. I wouldn't know anything about rich stuff like herringbones or anything like that. But <laughs> I think this is like more of a herringbone where it, it kind of V's in like chevron shapes. Okay. And it's cool. It's got a milled pocket clip, which comes off the top. So it is a very deep carry pocket hmm. clip. It's it got also, a ball bearing on it? It has Ooh. a ball. Yeah, yeah. So when you stick it in, it just kind of rolls on. So M390 steel, this is very cool one. And I, is, is that one a slip joint? No, it is. Yes, it is. It is, okay, because it was the Traveler. I was trying to remember. Traveler. I was pretty sure that one was a slip joint. It's so weird because it has the uh, the detent is so nice. I thought it locked. Yeah. I, it sounds like a back lock or yeah. whatever. The, 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 talk on, uh, the talk on the top end of that is really nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's sweet. This is a cool knife, guys. Man. We'll have to figure need, out what the story to, is on that. Yeah, we need to check out these a little <laughs> more often. Um, M390, $275 on the website, and you can own the Leong Ma Traveler. Traveler. Cool. Um, well, I've got a nice little fixed blade here. So this is the Cumming Blade, blade Works, the Palm Tack Fixed Blade. And this is a black my uh, canvas micarta. Comes in an AEBL steel. This is a common steel that a lot of uh, custom makers like to use because it's really tough. Uh, it's got great edge retention and it's not brittle. Um, so with blade steels, as you guys probably know, there's a trade-off between how tough a knife can be and then how brittle the edge will be. So toughness is not always a good thing if it's not heat treated and ground correctly. So this particular one from Cumming Blade Works is uh, AEBL. I'm actually interested on exactly what the grind is, it looks like it's a, probably a hollow grind. I think it's hollow ground. Um, obviously clip point style blade and it's, uh, yeah, it's a it's a saber ground, but I, it's, so saber just means that half of the grind is one thing and this top half is 
a, like a hollow or a flat grind. So this here, I'm pretty sure is a hollow. And then you have a nice leather sheath, all made in the United States. So kind of a neat little fixed blade. I don't think Cummings Blade Works has ever made it onto a banter or a wow. No. So again, we really wanted to like stretch ourselves and just see what we had on the shelves that you guys hadn't seen before. So really neat knife, goes for 150 bucks on the website. So yeah. I have a fixed blade made in the USA. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> <laughs> this thing right here, oh my goodness. This is so interesting. It's Look such a cool job. It's such a cool knife, man. Holy cow, the micarta. Okay, there's a lot to look at. This is the <laughs> Buck GCK fixed blade. It's a five and a half inch blade. You got the Tonto shape, but let's talk about a few things. First of all, 9.9 .9 ounces. Very important. Very <laughs> important. I like a no, sub 10 ounce fixed blade. You oh, know what I mean? Oh yeah. If like it's if I, over if, 10. If I pick up a, a fixed blade, I'm like, oh, no, it's over 10. I ain't buying it. I yeah, buying right, it. right. <laughs> exactly. Um, this is a cool knife. And honestly, let's just look at the details. There's so many little milled out details. Obviously on the blade here, you've got these two channels that are milled out. But and those the, might be stamped out. They may not be milled, but there, there's a pattern at least. There's right? a pattern. Yeah. Now, the micarta has been milled mm -hmm. to have steps. It's almost, I don't know. I don't think it's different layers. I think that it literally, they milled out. Like they threw it in a CNC machine. They threw it in a CNC cool. and had this milled. It's so cool. There's like, what, half a dozen layers going up. Maybe you can see it. it's like podium micarta podium, instead of podium jimping <laughs> podium micarta <laughs> podium micarta this is cool it's a very tactical blade you got this big old thick stock on the back all the way up to the tonto and a big old sheath that you can pick up carry stick anywhere that's a tough looking sheath man oh dude, this is the yeah. real deal this this knife is the real deal and Hundred bucks. Whoa, really? Hundred bucks, dude. I thought it was gonna be like a buck fifty with how intense the milling is on dude, the handle and with is, how nice that sheath is. I wish that you guys could see it for like up hand. I know you guys can see it, but man, that's really cool. Huh? Interesting. That's cool. So yeah, that's the Buck GCK fixed blade for a hundred dollars. That's a cool knife. I might. I I was. I said there were two knives on the table I wanted to buy. I might want to buy that. Oh, one you too. should check it out. All right. So speaking of which, the second knife on the table. Oh, I got to make sure I can see see Graham. Okay, here we go. The second wife knife that we have on the table that I have talked about multiple times wanting to buying is the MKM Clapa. This is it's the Clapa. Okay. Clapa. You might read clap on the website, but it's the Clapa. It's named after some mountains in Italy. Yes. <laughs> It's a Bob Trizzola design. Bob Trizzola, you know, he's the, the godfather of tactical folders. Um, and it's, you know, MKM. It's got a really neat design, kind of uh, rounded accent features. You've got some color here with the pocket clip and the backspacer. You've got that MKM, um, like the sun rising, I think is what the, the blue pivot is for. you got the blue pivot there. And then a, a really nice micarta, really nice uh, titanium construction. And uh, the cool thing about this, it's not a feature that I particularly care about because I don't, travel like if i was going to travel in europe i would just carry a victorinox because i think those are legal pretty much everywhere um, but you can remove the flipper tab on this if you have legal restrictions on one-handed or two-handed opening knives and then you do have this um nail nick here so that you can open and close the knife uh two-handed if you need to um, due to restrictions where you live uh, and this knife goes for it's m390 blade and this knife goes for 234 dollars on the website I have one more. I'm on my last one. All right, man. We're on the home stretch. This to me is probably one of the coolest. I don't know why. Maybe it's, I've always liked the Feist and I think I like it. It's very intriguing to me because it's a front flip and mm -hmm. I love front flipping. I don't know why. I don't even own a front flipper, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I love front flipping this knife. Um, man, the micarta on this guys is it's so weird because I look at some micarta and I'm like, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. And then every once in a while you see a, a weave pattern that is perfect micarta. This to me is probably the perfect micarta. That's like your perfect version. I'm not I'm not yeah. even kidding. Like no joke. It's got it's got grooves. It you can fill the the canvas in it. It's oh, man. 
just look at it. Just look Seriously, at it. I. Uh, okay, you guys look. I'm gonna read some specs. S35 VN steel. You got my Carter. You got a milled pocket clip. Oh man, liner lock, front flip. Dude, this thing is sweet. And Blade HQ exclusive. Blade HQ exclusive. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Besides the uh, the Marfion beard comb, right? This is the that's probably, the one. That's I'd the one, pick huh? This one off the table. <laughs> right on. No joke. Me me and one of the other guys in the marketing department when these first popped up, yeah, we were like, yeah, he got one. I didn't. Sounds and like you need to get one. I need that's, to get that, one. What I'm hearing Honestly, is that you need legit, one. Honestly, legit, this knife is so cool, guys. I the color combination. The like satiny black mm -hmm. coating. I really like that smoky black that is, it's on those and on the Sheepdog. It's a similar uh, finish that they've done on them. Right. Lundquist design. Man, this thing is sick. Cool. I'm telling you, awesome. Uh, S35VN, this is the Lundquist, Kaiser Lundquist Feist, and you can get it for $130 on the website. Guys, it's beautiful. It's amazing. All right, uh, I've got two left. I don't know how that happened. So I'll blow through these really quick. Um, and then we have an epic giveaway. So we're gonna be doing that. Nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, one more from QSP Knives. I want you guys to see the profile of this thing before I open it. The flipper tab on this is really interesting. Hmm. So it's jimped across the back here and it's jimped across the top here. So when you open it, right, it's now there's jimping on the forward part of oh, this as well. Oh, that's cool. Right, so if you wanted to get a little purchase here or you wouldn't wanna slip up into the blade, um, kind of a neat knife. So this is the Leopard. This was another one that you guys had suggested that you wanted to see. Um, it's got a Sandvik 14C28N blade. Uh, so it's a Sandvik steel, obviously nice micarta handle, stainless steel liners. Um, it's got a deep carry pocket clip. All the things, uh, and it goes for forty eight ninety nine on the Dude, website. Dude, that thing's good looking yeah. knife. Yeah, it's a good looking knife. I really like. This is the thing for me that like sells it. This is the thing that I think is really neat. It's just kind of a unique flipper tab, right? Right. It's fun to see just different takes on the standard. Right. Yeah, that's cool. All right, and then the final one that I have is the uh, Lion Steel. This is the Bushcraft B forty. And I just love this thing. The shape of it, the design of it, it reminds me a little bit of that, uh, was it the Dark Horse at the very beginning? Yeah. Yeah, the, the Highlander. Horse. It reminds me a little bit, oh yeah, it reminds me a little bit of the Highlander. Um, this has got a Schleppner steel on it. Obviously it's full tang. Micarta handles that you can take on or off to clean, replace, make new ones, whatever you wanna do. And then a really nice uh, leather sheath. This is made in Italy, Alliance where line steel is made. They are part of the MKM Consortium. So they also make some MKM knives as well. And uh, like I said, uh, the Italians know how to make a good leather sheath. So, Dude, that Italian leather? Yep. That's primo. They, they do it right, man. They do it right. So really cool knife. Overall length on this thing is 8.75 inches, and you get a four inch blade. So, so just, a, just a good working what, knife. What's the, what's the weight on that one? Oh yeah, good question. Uh, comes in right at six ounces. Oh, so six yeah. ounces even. Yeah, yeah nice, oh, nice even number. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> if you're looking for a good just six ounce knife, the line still, that's the only real point, only real reason to buy it is it hits that six ounce. You know what, ne ounce. next time we should just do a weight banter. We'll just get all the knives and we'll go through different classifications of weight. When I was a kid, I used to box in the banter weight division oh, when I was nice. a kid. <laughs> hey, there we go. Boxing banter. <laughs> all right, um, let me see here. Let me just make sure there's nothing else from Graham. Uh, um, I think you already hit this. Um, Guardian EDC was wanting to see, will you open the Feist and just hold, give, give a, a hand profile in that so people can see how it fits in your hands? Yep. Here's the Feist, here's the hams, <laughs> and it is a four finger knife for me. Feels good in hand then? It honestly, cool. it feels really good. To me, this is a gentleman-esque smaller knife. For, for me personally, this is, that is how I would classify it. Um, just because it's a front flipper and it's got the milled pocket clip. I think it's a gentleman's knife. I don't think there's no arguing that. Like it's one, the Feist I think has always been a gentleman's knife. But I will tell you this, you can still get full purchase on that thing. And cool. it's nice. And actually the milled pocket clip kind of grabs right here in the, uh, the chub of my, I don't know what that, yeah, no, that that's, what is. Yeah, no, that's- What's this called? No, scientifically that's called the chub. That's the chub. What, <laughs> 
That's the chub of your hand. <laughs> in the chub, in the chub of my hand, the pocket clip actually not not dis. It's not uncomfortable, but right. it kind of grips right in oh, okay, that yeah, yeah. in the chub. <laughs> and we gotta call it the pad. The pad. That's probably what the actual. The pad, it's probably the pad of your hand. Pad of yeah, my that's hand. probably the real thing. But I love this thing and. Yeah, I think I might have to get one. Cool. Dude, you're you're definitely drooling over it. So, on the table, is that what you're going with? Besides the Marfion beard of course, OTF? Well, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I cool. would go with the Feist. Right on. I think on the table... I Honestly, this Castillo is kind of speaking to me. That's pretty cool. And I, I think it's just because it just reminds me of working construction, right? Because it's called the Navaja, right? Yeah. Like, I, I think it's really neat. Um, so the Castillo speaking to me, but that Buck Fixed Blade, I think that's going home with me tonight. I'm not even kidding. Like, yes. I think that's going home with me tonight. I, that, that's actually a really cool knife. For, for the price, like, right. that's pretty stellar. Cool. Um, well, let us know, guys, which uh, micarta knife you would take home on the table. This was a long one, but you guys wanted us to stay on, so we stayed on. It was fun hanging out. Uh, it was fun hearing from you guys. And um, now we're going to do a giveaway. Let's so as you guys know, uh, WOW is brought to you by We Knives. We Knives is an awesome company. We had a couple Civivis on the table. We actually doesn't make any knives with Micarta. So um, just more evidence that when I say they don't tell us what goes on the table or what the topic of WOW is, that is the truth. They are legitimately just really rad knife nuts that are excited to be part of this community. And they make a really great knife, both their budget line of Civivi and their really nice uh, premium Wii knives. And uh, it's kind of a neat story. I would love to be able to tell Wii's story one day. It's very, it's very like bootstraps. Like they were all working for different companies and they're like, wait, we want to do our own thing. So they like pulled their resources and started Wii knives, which is really cool. So anyways, um, they don't tell us what to do. They don't tell us how to do it. But what they do do is give us knives to give away to you guys. And this month's knife is actually a really cool knife. Um, they're actually usually really cool, but this is the Scopio from Wii. So full titanium construction on this thing. Obviously you got the frame lock, you got the pocket clip, um, really subtle, some really neat milling on the backside and then a 20 CV blade. So this is a, this is a, this is a baller knife guys. This is a really nice mid to large size folder, really neat grinds, uh, across the front here. And you guys can win this knife right now. Graham should be dropping a link into the live chat. And he should be dropping a link into uh, the comment section as well. So if you're not seeing the link, make sure to hit refresh and then uh, that will get you to take you over to the giveaway page to win this sweet Wii knife from our friends over at Wii Knives. Um, I think that's it. This has been a blast. We went a little longer than normal. Jamie's over here shuffling on his feet a lot. He's been on his feet the entire time and he, he's looking like he feels a little tired. But uh, <laughs> so we could keep going. I think that'd be pretty funny. He just yeah. walks out. <laughs> Let's just, you know what? Let's just back it on up. Yeah. And we'll yeah. start over. We'll just start over. Let's see what else. You know, let's trade knives. I'll talk about yours. You talk about yeah, mine. That's a good idea, but I no, still need to hang on the We, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Jamie just put out an amazing kitchen knife video on the channel. We know that those videos aren't the most popular videos that you guys enjoy, but I will say that it was, it's just such cool editing. Even if you're not into kitchen knives, go check out that new video on the channel. It's really, really rad. And uh, I think that's all we got. So thanks guys. We'll catch you on the next one.